I'm going to talk to you today about five of my female heroines from literature, or sheroes, as I like to think of them. And it's been really difficult getting it down to five, um, but I'm going to start with Miss Marple. Um, I first discovered Agatha Christie when I was, I suppose, about 10, and I was away on holiday with my family. And we didn't have books in our house growing up, but there was an Agatha Christie, there was a Miss Marple um, in this holiday cottage that we had. And I read it, and I remember thinking, oh, this is brilliant, I hope she's written something else. And so Miss Marple came to me early and I really admire her for her great age, for her, um, for her heartbreak, because she is one of those heroines who had her heart broken and kind of never really got over it, and for her ability to notice everything and get to the bottom of everything, but in a really polite sort of way. Um, and I like her knitting skills as well. She's quite often knitting, which um, makes me feel, you always feel like she's a kind of, she's your granny really, isn't she? Um, so I think everyone needs a, a, a bit of a Miss Marple character on their list of, of sheroes. <laughs> My favourite historical novel is called Water Music and is by an American writer called T.C. Boyle. And it was his first uh, novel. It's interesting because we're at the Edinburgh Book Festival today. and. Um, T.C. Boyle came to the book festival a few years ago and I got a ticket and I sat in the front like, I, like he was this magical creature and listened to him speak and afterwards I went up and hugged the director of the book festival for bringing him to Scotland because um, I never thought I'd get to see T.C. Boyle in the flesh. Um, and he, he writes all different kinds of genres which is something I also like about him as a writer but in his very first book which is called Water Music and is the story of Mungo Park, who was a, a, a Scottish doctor uh, and also explorer who went uh, twice up the Niger, once in 1799 and on a bit of a doomed expedition, expedition rather, in um, 1803. Um, he's created, was created the character of Mungo's wife, Ailey. And Ailey is from the borders and she's a doctor's daughter and she is just, a gallus would be a really good word for Ailey. She knows what she wants, even though she's sort of on that cusp of the 19th century. Uh, she, she's a very kind of um, forthright and um, adventurous woman, although she doesn't go up the Niger with Mungo, she leaves that to him. And she runs the house while he's away and takes no nonsense. And I think she's a fabulous character. She just fizzles off the page and, and very different from what you would often think of these kind of Georgian, uh, Georgian women in books. Um, she's really got quite a bit of life about her. So my next choice is a woman that I actually wrote a book about. Um, her name is Mariah Graham. And she was a traveller and adventurer at the very end of the 18th century and beginning of the 19th century. And I discovered her journals and letters in the John Murray archive at the National Library of Scotland. And quite often being in the archive is a bit like, it's a bit like treasure hunting. So you're digging through all this stuff and a lot of it is really pedestrian and boring and you wish you had brought sandwiches and you're not allowed. And, and, and then suddenly you'll come across something and it's quite magical actually. It's as if that person who's been dead for 100 years or 200 years or 300 years, in Mariah's case, um, is standing next to you and is telling you what they had for breakfast and what they're worried about and why they didn't sleep well last night and what they've been up to. And her letters had that tone. Um, she sounded really quite modern and I took to her immediately because she was a bit of a rebel as well. She was a Navy captain's daughter and a Navy captain's wife. And um, she traveled with her husband and he died outside Valparaiso in Chile in 1823. And Mariah decided to stay on. And she stayed in Chile for a year and then went to Brazil where she wrote two books for John Murray, a big publisher um, of that era who had an amazing salon in London. And um, people kept trying to send her home and saying that you know she shouldn't be doing this because she was a lady. And um, she would have none of it. And she liked adventuring and adventured really for the rest of her life and wrote books for Murray all the way through. And when she was in Chile, um, she, there was an earthquake and she discovered or, or worked out how to measure this earthquake. She was a mathematician. When she got back to London, she went to the Royal Society and said, I figured out how to measure earthquakes, can I present my theory? And they said, no, because women can't do maths. But then Charles Dickens stood up for her. So that was great. And she got to, her theory is actually the basis of how we measure earthquakes today. So she's really quite extraordinary. And I often think of Mariah um, 
that she isn't memorialized. You know, if there was a man who had done that, there would definitely be at least a statue somewhere. So I wrote a book. <laughs> I have a girl crush on a female poet called Lucy English, who's based down in Bristol, and I met some years ago. She's a spoken word person. And I have great um, admiration, because I'm a swap, really. And so I'm quite good at talking about history and things, but I don't perform. And so I have a huge kind of admiration for spoken word artists who can stand up and, and, and just do it. I always say, I'll never do anything in a nightclub. You know, those kind of gigs that go on in, I can't do those. So um, I have great uh, a, a sort of an admiration for Lucy and her performance. And I love her work. A lot of it is very feminist and quite random and quite kind of punky. And um, she has a poem called Let Me Be that starts, let me be, let me be, let me be your slut. And it continues from there. And I, I just really love it. She makes you laugh and she makes you think and there's really nothing more that I'd want. So Lucy's definitely on my list. I wanted to pick someone from drama. So I've decided to pick Moira, who is Alan Bissett's amazing uh, character. She's a cleaning lady from Falkirk. And she manages to, um, to touch you in lots of different ways. She's funny and scary and, um, and quite deep and, and touching, really, some of the time. And um, I read the scripts, uh, the Moira scripts, and really liked them, and then went to see Alan Bissett himself be Moira. And that really is quite something, because I know Alan. Um, and so I, I was kind of, it was quite disturbing at first. Oh, there's Alan in women's clothes. That's a bit odd. And then he just became Moira. And when it, I saw Alan afterwards, I was like, well, who are you? <laughs> um, so I can hi heartily recommend Moira um, for her kuthi ways. And I think there's something really interesting about working class fiction, you know, working class. And she's a great working class character. And in a way, there's even a genre of that. So I think about um, the Mrs. Harris books, where you've got this sort of slightly kuthi cleaning lady. We're almost back to Miss Marple at the beginning now. Um, and Moira falls into that category of somebody who works hard and, and knows themselves and has a really strong voice. And I, I love that about her. <laughs>